They house some of the most dangerous viruses and deadly bacteria in existence, pathogens like Ebola, anthrax, and smallpox. Scientists experiment with them in biolabs strewn across the U.S. to discover new ways to treat and prevent diseases. But how safe are the experiments? And what happens if something goes wrong in these kinds of labs? We don't even know how many high containment labs there are in the United States. Following lab mistakes at the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention that potentially expose workers to anthrax, Ebola, and a deadly strain of bird flu, a USA Today network investigation found hundreds of accidents have happened at labs nationwide with little or no public disclosure. What the CDC incidents showed us this summer in particular is that the very best labs are not perfectly safe. Like in Louisiana where tests are currently underway to make sure a deadly bioterror bacterium hasn't contaminated the soil and water around the Tulane National Primate Research Center near New Orleans. Federal officials say sloppy biosafety practices led to the infection of monkeys that had been living in an outdoor breeding colony. We clearly screwed up, there's no doubt, and I'm very sorry about that. So far, no tests have detected the bacterium outdoors, but it's the overall secrecy with which these accidents and investigations are handled that cause the most concern. The irony is that the more people in the community feel that there's secrecy, the more they're distrustful, whether it's even warranted, their distrust is warranted or not. Our investigation identified more than 200 labs operating at a biosafety level three and four, the highest levels of containment. Lab safety experts say the best labs put safety first and emphasize that serious infections among lab workers are rare. Rarer still, incidents where labs become the source of an outbreak. Almost all accidents occur um, with things that are, with pathogens that are not, um, that aren't transmissible. So the Ebola vaccine that we are starting to come up with, and we have several different candidates, you know, these would not be possible to develop if we did not have high containment laboratories. And while the benefits may be clear, what's actually going on inside the labs is not. It's impossible to get a full picture of lab incidents and accidents because oversight is fragmented, often secretive, and largely self-policing. We found that more than 100 labs experimenting with potential bioterror agents have faced enforcement actions for serious safety violations since 2003. Some are repeat offenders. Five labs have faced sanctions multiple times. Two were kicked out of the select agent program, five others suspended. Who and where are they? Federal regulators won't release their names. They say a 2002 bioterrorism law requires this information be kept secret. Some say that's not enough. It's crucial for, for journalists and, and safety advocates and others to keep digging and trying to find out what's going on.